Most of you have probably heard standing in water or handling any kind of electrical current in wet conditions is dangerous. You can get electrocuted. If you haven't heard that, you're hearing it now, don't do it. The reason is household current, typically 120 volts around here, is trying to find ground. If you do anything to provide a better path between you and ground, you're greatly increasing your risk. As you'll notice, I've got this cord unplugged just for this demonstration. So anyway, what we're going to do is say, okay, is water really conductive or is there something else going on? So we're going to take a look at that. Okay, I've got a little visual demonstration set up here. This is a uh, automotive 12-volt um, DC tester. Just got a little filament type light in there to light up if you touch it to 12 volts. And the other side being uh, to ground in a car which is negative. This is a power station for 12 volt DC output. It's closer to 13, but for this it, it really doesn't matter. <clears throat> so if we touch this uh, tester to this uh, to the electrode here, it lights up very well, which you would expect. And now this is a piece of heavy gauge copper wire used to provide a ground for household uh, electrical uh, supplies. And you can see very good conductivity expecting copper. This is aluminum bar stock. Aluminum has very good conductivity. This ordinary piece of steel bar stock, good conductivity. The best conductivity of the metals is in silver, but I don't have a, a silver bar here to show you. Now, in metals, you have a, a conduction band of electrons. They're very loosely held, and they can move very easily through the metal. And uh, slight differences between the metals, uh, and uh, copper is very good, that's why it's used in most household uh, circuits. Now, there's another way to get conduction, and that is through a semiconductor. This is a light emitting diode, and uh, it's a 12 volt light emitting diode. We're just going to clamp this alligator clip to it. Now, diodes only allow current to pass in one direction. So, we're going to try our, hooking up our tester to this. The light lights up, the LED. This is negative, that's positive. This doesn't because it takes more current than it's necessary to light this to light that. So now if we reverse these leads, switch this around, so we put our negative over here on the green side, positive here, nothing. This doesn't light, that's because this has a positive negative junction there, only allows current to flow in one direction, like any diode. So now we're going to look at something that most people watching this probably haven't seen before. That's something called compressed expanded graphite. This is a sheet of compressed expanded graphite. I used to work with it many years ago, but uh, I didn't have any of it. So just a few years ago, I bought some off eBay, and that's what this is. And the way it's made is crystalline flake graphite, which has got a hexagonal molecular structure. Each carbon atom bonded to three other carbon atoms. There's electrons that can move very easily through this plane. And it's very good, about like a metal. So, but it's not, it's just carbon. Where diamonds got good hardness, good thermal conductivity, poor electrical conductivity. Graphite has good electrical and thermal conductivity, but it's anisotropic, meaning it's good across or through the plane like that, through that direction, but it's lousy going that way in the direction of compression. So we'll just take a quick look at it, and you'll see it can conduct very well, just, just like a metal. Now, I don't have enough thickness here to do electrical anisotropy uh, demonstration, but uh, if you go to the end of this uh, demonstration, we did a thermal anisotropy demonstration with uh, some of the same material. So, loosely held electrons here, loosely held electrons here, positive negative junction and semiconductor. Now we're going to look at water, which is a different type of process. It's an electrolytic process. Okay, we're going to take a look at the conductivity of water. Water doesn't have a conduction band of electrons like metal. It doesn't have loosely held electrons moving around above a hexagonal carbon plane in, in graphite. It doesn't have a positive negatively doped semiconductor like in a light emitting diode. Um, 
to get current to flow in, in water, you're going to have to have ion migration. And in pure water, this is distilled water, just a jug I bought from the grocery store. It's probably not super pure, but it should be better than tap water. Um, water doesn't have uh, many ions in it. The level of hydrogen ions, H+, plus, and hydroxide ions, OH- minus, are very, very low. So it's not very conductive. What we're going to do is just use this steel wall here as an electrode and put our automobile tester in one side. Let's see if we can get, get this thing to light up. Okay, but if you see if we touch them, it does. But really, not enough conductivity to light up this tester. Okay, now we'll do, we're going to try this light emitting diode. I'm going to hook up this green wire to the tester and put the uh, this wire here. You can see it lights up if I touch it. Put it in the water, and you do get it to light up. For it dims as you get further away from it, but you do. This is very low current draw. There is enough conductivity to make this light, but not this regular tester. Now, because in electrolytic processes, like in water, the distance between the electrodes and the electrode surface area, along with the concentration of the electrolyte, makes a difference. So we're going to replace this all with a not super clean uh, flat blade uh, Basically, a large putty knife, what it really is. Let's see if we can get that in there. Now, still not enough current to make this light up. Now, if we touch it, whoop, there we go. Yeah, it's definitely no problem there, but not can't get enough current flow to make this light up. So, okay, so what can we do to do that? Let's, let's see if we can keep that from sliding around. Now what we're going to do is add some just normal table salt, sodium chloride to this, and uh, let's see what happens. So we're going to stir it around a little bit with this thing. It should start to light up. Get enough in there. There it goes. But look at the difference. Move it away from it. It dims till you can't see it. Move it close to us, not touching the metal. It lights up. So there is an electrolytic process going on here. I'm going to take a close up here in a minute. If you look closely, you'll see bubbles coming off that. This being minus, I would imagine that's probably hydrogen gas, being re water being reduced, possibly chlorine coming off the uh, anode here. So anyway, um, that's how conductivity works in water. You don't have the conduction band of electrons, no loosely held electrons. It's an electrolytic process, so the purity of water makes a difference. When you're out working outside or working in your garage or whatever, you have to assume the water is pretty impure, and there could be enough electrolytic process to conduct enough to, uh, to give you a problem. So you can always keep that in mind. Okay, let's get a little closer look at this. So you can see the bubbles of gas coming off. Off the cathode, we should be getting hydrogen off the anode chlorine gas. Uh, but it's an electrolytic process. You don't have that conduction band going on. So you have to have ions moving from one electrode to the other and through the solution. And resistance depends on electrode size, the amount of ions in solution, and the distance between the electrodes. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like it and click on the round Anisotropic Plus subscribe button. And check out our other links, especially the uh, one to the um, thermal anisotropy video I did several years ago. It has a little deeper ex explanation of the uh, how to make that compressed expanded graphite. So appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. And uh, please check out our other videos. Thank you.